Hey everybody, welcome back to the learning artist. I suppose I am calling this playlist. Continuing on trying to replicate this photo as well as I can. <laughs> so today, okay, last time I did some of the corn stalks. Uh, I'm going to let this paint set up a little bit before I go in and start putting some some highlights of the cornfield. So in the meantime I'm going to come back to the actual oak tree and start the next round of foliage. I have the darker foliage in and so I think this is kind of set up enough where I can go in and start adding some of the highlights for that to bring that tree out. Uh, later on we'll come down and work on the trunks and stuff like that. Alright, so obviously, like I said, I'm not here to teach you how to paint because I'm still learning. And I'm not qualified to teach anybody how to paint. Um, but I do recommend that you find a good teacher and subscribe to whatever, you know, if they have online lessons or whatever it is. I personally um, subscribe to Michael James Smith. In my, in my opinion, he's one of the best artists I've ever seen. And I just like his style. Like I said, I'm not an abstract painter, so I stay away from abstract art, and I like realistic stuff. That's just the way my brain works. I think I mentioned last time, I don't get abstract. <laughs> Alright, so I gotta mix up some, mix up my next color. Uh, the shadows... The shadows I put in using a mixture of ivory black, uh, burnt umber, a touch of yellow, uh, sap green, uh, touch of uh, a tad of lemon yellow, and I also use uh, Windsor Newton's um, Liquin Original to speed up the drying time. So what I'm going to do is, and I think, now I, prob I will probably won't film the entire process of me doing this tree. I would never bore you to death. Um, but there's a, a couple brushes I still haven't gotten the knack of. And I don't know if I have the right one. I'll probably order one of uh, Michael James Smith's fan brushes. Um, because that's, using a fan brush is really good for doing foliage. So I'm going to try uh, this Princeton fan brush. Uh, I think it's an aught size. And if that doesn't work, I'll abandon that and probably go back to my river brush, uh, my size 1 river brush. It's actually a liner brush, but uh, we'll continue with that. All right, so I'm just going to try to work on this area for this video right here. Maybe do some, some of the foliage on top, and then I'll let you go. Um, remember I'm learning to paint and in a in a upcoming video I'm gonna I'm gonna show you my actually first paint painting that I did and I'll just kind of show you some paintings progressively hopefully I'm getting better as I go and yeah uh, so come along with me and comment in the video on what you think. Alright, so 
for the high for the I'm taking that this is the dark okay here's block in stuff where the tree where the leaves are more uh, dense okay probably need to darken that area speaking of darkening darkening last time I worked on this cornfield and uh, what I'm going to do is I, I want to put a shadow right here so I am going to grab my round brush uh, I'm not really sure what size it is size 6 and I'm going to I'll dip that in thinner a little bit rub that out then I'm going to take the I'm going to take some uh, liquid original put that on my palette and then I'm going to take a little bit of the ivory black mix that in good it will kind of give it a um, transparent look but I'm also going to add just a touch of uh, is that raw umber or burnt umber one of those two it's raw umber mix that in then what I'm going to come down here and I am going to put the shadow Then I'll blend that in with the grass when I do that. And so I have that little shadow there. So I'm done with that brush. Anyway, cotton diapers make the best rags, by the way. All right, now let's do a mixture. So I'm going to get some of the sap green. bit of lemon yellow uh, hold it up might be a little bit too dark so I'm going to add some more lemon yellow and a little bit of titanium white Oops, drop my brush. And try to match the color. And then start adding some of these highlights. I don't know if this is going to look good or not. lighter colors out into the sky. I can kind of go over. I haven't added any highlights on these branches. Actually, this branch doesn't really have many highlights on it. Mainly the trunk coming up through here. Most of those are pretty dark. I'm just lightly use the corner there. 
and it's a small painting so I can't really add too much you know the bigger the painting the more defined that you make your leaves and like I said this this may not be a good fan brush to do this that's a big old oak tree that's down there down this down the road Yeah, I think it might be better if I use a rigger brush. That doesn't look that bad. For me, anyway. It's not like I have any commission paintings. More for my enjoyment. I suppose I can give them away as Christmas presents or something if anybody wants them. Or you can buy them. <laughs> actually highlights these are kind of the mid-tone guess obviously I think Michael James Smith you know he, he puts in the mid-tones first and I tried to do that I don't know if I got them right but uh, does the mid-tones and then he puts the darks and then he does the highlights Like I said, I'm learning, trying to anyway. I don't know if my video is really good. I'm not set up for doing videos on my painting. I'm set up for doing my software tutorials. So all of my equipment is geared to look at my computer, not my painting easel. But that will come with time, I suppose.
Man, yeah, just a, a day in my life, I guess, sharing with you. Hope you don't mind. And this is the step where you, I suppose, you start going over the branches where there's leaves out in front. So what I'm going to do, well, let me continue here a little bit. So I think the fan brush will be better for doing this part oops I have a lot of oopses in my paintings I don't know how these videos are going to turn out. It's not the best camera for doing this kind of stuff. I have a di uh, uh, DL DLR. DLS, whatever it is, digital camera. But I got it out and the contacts have for the plugging it in got torn up. So I can't use that. So I'm just using my Sony hand handy cam. Here we have a lot of foliage out front here. It's an oak tree, so I'm trying to be as random as I can. Make them look more like leaves. So 
sometimes I have a bad habit that my trees look more like willows. make them too long of strokes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this brush off and I'm going to get my rigger brush out or my liner brush. That way I have a little bit more control. So the leaves aren't as elongated. So, how did I get into painting? I think you guys know that on the last video I talked about, I was a cartographer. That's what I'm, I was trained in. That's what my degree is in. I've always liked art. But I never took the time to learn until recently. I was watching a video on YouTube of a of a guy. He he he, he his channel's called Juni Art J O O N Y. And he works with acrylics. And he only uses five colors. He uses uh, titanium white, black, cerulean blue, and vermilion. And then he mixes all of his colors as he needs them. As he uses them, he mixes them right on the palette as he's painting the object. He doesn't do any blocking or anything like that. He doesn't do any uh, sketching. He doesn't plan out his, his uh, paintings. He just starts applying paint. Well, anyway... I'll show you I'll show you the painting in a future video the one that I that got me started but I wanted to do it I, I did it digitally I have a I have a tablet with a with a with a pen for my computer and so I watched one of his videos to try to replicate what he was doing except I was using my digital pen and it turned out pretty good I mean for my in my opinion it turned out pretty nice but then I had that feeling I, I, I said I have to do this with paint and so I my sons were asking what everybody wanted for Christmas and so I said hey I'll take some uh, acrylic paints and some canvas and so that's I got that as a Christmas present and I went to paint and I did my first painting following Juniart and uh, 
pretty much the rest is history. Oops, sorry. So I ended up painting in the first two months of me having painting supplies. In two months I did 30 paintings because like I said the oops that's kind of globby. The paintings at Juniart, he would finish a painting in a half hour. And with me, with my attention span, call it what it is, lack of attention. Yuck. And clean that off. A little bit of a little bit of thinner. Clean that off there. That smudge. But my attention span is really, really small. And those half hour to hour paintings is what my little feeble brain could withstand. But over time, I wanted to add more detail to my paintings and do some original paintings and stuff like that. So I started making other kinds of paintings. I started out using only the five colors that I mentioned but then started morphing into more colors, that kind of stuff. Then I stumbled across Michael James Smith's paintings on YouTube and looking at his technique say and basically saying yeah that's where I want to be I will I don't think I'll ever get as good as he is but that style that realistic photorealistic painting and so I started paying more attention to him, to his techniques and his training. Except I was still using I was still using acrylics. And then the more and more I started appreciating his stuff, so I slowly transitioned to oils. And since this is a hobby, I didn't want to spend all types of money getting stuff. So I don't have the Windsor Newton Griffin paints, you know, the fast drying oils and all that kind of stuff. But I'll work my way up to that eventually. That way I can, that I can come back the next day and, and do it. Now, right now, this paint that I'm applying now, there is no liquid in it. I did not put liquid in this because I want it to be more opaque. Liquid has the, uh, makes it dry faster, but it also gives it more of a translucent. Now I could use cerulean blue or, or titanium white and you know add some opacity to it. But this these this middle these middle tones are gonna it's going to take a while for them to dry before I can start putting on my highlights.
but yeah, it, it, the tree's coming out. It's starting to come forward in the scene, which is what I'm trying to get to. It's not the best tree ever, but like I said, I'm still learning. I love to learn. I think this area, I'll take care of that when I do the highlights. That doesn't look like leaves to me. So, hey, this is the second video, and I'm just going to continue on doing this, and then the next video should be in a, in a day or so, we'll start putting the highlights on the tree. But, for now, thanks for joining me, for putting up with this old guy learning a new hobby. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell if you would. Uh, if you feel inclined to support me on my physical world, buymeacoffee.com slash myphysicalworld. And I will see you guys on the next video. See you later.